Good morning, folks. I reiterate, everyone on Earth can go outside and see Comet Ison right now with the right equipment. You can see the coma and the tail, a faint green-gray smudge, but today's actually not optimal viewing due to the lunar glow likely polluting the sky. Bruce Gary has revamped his Ison brightness curve. Those looking for a sight of their lives probably won't be pleased, but it is what it is. I'll encourage you to see the rest of his images and descriptions, especially the ice on jet pointing towards the sun. Don't want to spoil everything. Observer level members were introduced to 209p slash linear last night. Comet to keep in mind going forward. Now the experts are predicting a major meteor shower in May 2014 when it comes close to Earth. And that might yet occur. But we found a tiny problem with their timing predictions. See if you can figure it out before we spill the beans. Jellyfish in the system caused a shutdown of Sweden's biggest nuke plant. Antarctic ice has reached a new maximum extent. Now to be clear, this is a surface ice record and indications of submarine melting continue despite the activity up here. This is Jerry, way out in the Atlantic. Might strengthen a bit more, but he won't have anyone to play with. Southeastern Australia, taking that storm a bit worse than I'd hoped. Tuesday came and the damage was significant. Same story in the northwest and up into Canada, where that same storm has continued its flash flooding but added tornadoes and major wind events to the situation now as well. Danger developing again in the west pacific, got two storms heading north and expected to each go to one side of Japan. The gamma burst from Vela two days ago was followed by one from Centaurus yesterday. Solar flaring remains low. But I'll go out on a limb and say the potential for uptick exists due to a rapidly growing and complexing active region on the south, already approaching gamma class. The solar wind under 300 km per second, again, it's indicative of solar magnetic shutdown, but we do see a density bump and we've expected a coronal hole stream, so if the speed rises today with a density drop off, we should assume that's it. We do indeed still have another day until the CME arrives that is expected to be more significant than the coronal hole stream. It's already creating a mid-level radiation storm at Earth after tagging our magnetic connection to the Sun with that CME. They are holding for now. NOAA actually thinks the CME is weaker than NASA's prediction I showed yesterday. Now if this was the big one, it would already be here. Same story as likely if it was going to damage satellites or any of the grid. But the density of this burst is one of the more impressive I've seen. We could climb into the G3 range of geomagnetic storms if we take the right impact. The northern coronal hole, completely earth-facing today. It is tough to see up top there, but she's influential nonetheless. Even with solar power decreased from the major quakes in Pakistan and Peru, the ending of these openings are moderately strong and they've shaken New Zealand and now Russia, near the location of the May 8-pointer. We have also taken over a thousand small tremors in Iceland, largest is a 3.4. Shots of our star and the weather to close, eyes open, no fear, it's 6.45am Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.